Are you currently getting great leads but having trouble analyzing what the after repair value is? Well today we're going to show you how to analyze and get an accurate ARV for your hot leads. What is up everyone? I'm Scott Perry and today we're going to show you how you can analyze properties in your area. But before we get started, please like and subscribe down below for more weekly real estate related content. So you've pulled the distressed property list, sent out your marketing, and now you're getting people calling wanting the cash offer you promised them in your marketing material. Now it's time to analyze the property and find the ARV estimate so you can start calculating your max offer. Remember, you'll be using the 70-30 rule as a wholesaler every day, so you need to be fully aware and understanding of this process. So let's have a quick review. To illustrate this, we will use a house that has an ARV or after repair value of $100,000. This ARV is what the home flipper is going to try and sell their home for on the MLS after they are done making the property look awesome. So applying the 70-30 rule, we will first multiply the $100,000 by 0.7, aka 70%, to arrive at an all-in investor price of $70,000. Next, we will subtract the repair cost. In our example, we will say this home is going to need $50,000 of work, which gives us a new price of $20,000. This will be the price we market the home to our buyers list. But let's not forget we still need to make money. So we will subtract the average wholesale fee of $5,000 giving us a grand total of $15,000. This will be the max offer we are able to make on the home. Now let's jump into PropStream and learn how to get an accurate after repair value on your leads. All right, back in the office, we've got PropStream up. Uh, but before we get started, check out in the description our free seven-day trial link to PropStream. Uh, you can go ahead and pause the video, go sign up for free, and then you can follow along what we're doing here uh, as we go through this. So we're going to analyze a deal on 32nd Street that we actually already got under contract, um, assigned it, and we're just waiting for it to close right now. So this will be the first screen that pops up once you type in the address. You go to Details. And now, again, we're going to be looking at the 70-30 rule. And in order to use that correctly, you're going to have to have a good comp. And then you're also going to have to have a good estimated repair cost. And we'll do another video on that, so stay tuned. So when you hear about comparables or comps, uh, it's, they're synonyms, same thing. Comps, just short for comparables for those that are new to the game. And then you're also going to be hearing the, the phrase ARV, which is after repair value. Ultimately, they're all the same thing. It's what is the house worth once it's fixed up and it's a retail deal being sold on the MLS with a realtor? And that's what we're trying to find out today. So you go to the comparables and nearby listings section, and you can see it pulls all the MLS data for what is filtered. Now, the default filter is going to give you everything within the last year on the MLS. Some areas, keep in mind, you may have to use public record because there might not be enough, enough uh, MLS data. Or you can use both. I start out with MLS because that's the best way to start. Uh, if you need to use both, go for it. It also gives you a square footage range. That way, you're not comparing a 1,000-square-foot home to a 3,000-square-foot home that has three more bedrooms down the street. And here's all the information over on the side. Now, what we need to do is this is in Indianapolis in the city. So things can be very different street-to-street, street, neighborhood to neighborhood. So basically, I want to start getting rid of these outliers here. So these homes are not going to be a good comp for homes in this area. So I don't even want these included. So I'm going to leave the square footage the same. A uh, year out is going to be the same. And I'm going to use, which nobody really talks about, and this is really my favorite tool, comping properties on PropStream, is this draw tool. Now, it calls it a draw tool. It should be a point-and-click tool. You can't draw anything. How you actually do it is you click and then click all the different shapes. And you can click out here, do, you know, make whatever kind of clicks you want. But I'm going to go along the main roads here and just get the neighborhood I'm looking at. Now, sometimes like this number 12 here, that can count in the comps. But we're just, since there's enough information here, we're going to stick with that. So I'm going to hit search. And it's going to bring us in here. Again, I'm keeping the square footage the same. Now, keep in mind, this white strip right here, 
this is the house that you're currently trying to comp. This is the house, uh, 3615 East 32nd Street. That's the house we're working on today. And then these are all the, quote, comps, right? So the first thing I'm going to notice is we've got 81, 79,000. Uh, this is high end, obviously, and as low as 16,000, a couple in the mid-30s, one for 10,000. This was in 2019. I really like to stay close, as close as I can. This one was only three months ago. Um, so now what I'm going to do is, like I said, this uh, number one right here correlates to the spot on the map. So that's where this house is located right here. And then you have this awesome feature of the photo icons, and it's going to pull the MLS uh, photos that was posted with the listing. And they can go back for many years. Uh, PropStream does a good job of pulling information um, from all over the place. So you'll be able to see all the information. You can change this. If there's not enough information, you can go back two years. Just change the time here. Um, but like I said, here we have enough information last year. So already just knowing the area, these higher numbers, those are going to be, that's most likely going to be our ARV after a pair value because these are probably going to be move-in ready and they're already flipped. So I'm going to click on the pictures to confirm that. And as you can see, this is a nice home, newly landscaped, fresh paint, new roof. You got all the pictures here. You can look inside, new floor, new paint, most likely new windows, updated kitchen. So you can say that this is a pretty nice setup here. They've got the garage uh, painted. It looks like they didn't do a ton of work on the garage, uh, but put a new door on it. And this would be a very good after repair value house to consider for your comp. So here's another $79,000 one. As you can see, this is moving ready as well. It's already painted. Somebody has been living here for a little bit, as you can tell. Kitchen's already been painted. It's fresh. And for this area, this is very much what the flip is going to look like after you're done. You know, hardwood floors. And you can go in and look at the different stuff. Uh, shed could use a little bit of work. That's probably where you're getting a couple grand discrepancy here. Um, and that was just sold a few months ago. This was sold early in 2020. Now you get down to here. So you're going to start looking at the homes that, you know, are selling much less. Now these are going to be as is comps. So you can see this one is definitely a whole, this was a wholesale deal. Most likely, um, inside needs to be totally redone. I don't even know if that's carpet or what exactly that is, you know, AC unit needs to be changed. Uh, you can look at the garage needs work. The yard needs work. Uh, these trees have to be taken down, which can cost a thousand dollars a piece if they're big, sometimes even $2,000 a piece. Um, so here's all the different, you know, bathroom, basically this needs to be redone. So this would be a wholesale property that sold for that. Here's 21,000 and you get the idea you go through, this is rather nice on the outside a newer roof, but I've looked at this one before and it's got, you know, kind of a weird inside with these closets. They need to be changed, which is going to then mess with your floor, but you get the idea. So you can go through here. That one's, you know, you could move into it and that would be a good house hack, uh, type of house, right? So you can start looking and say, okay, this is what they're selling kind of as is, if you will. And this is the after repair value. Well, we're only worried about the after repair value. Uh, because the people that we're selling it to are going to be flippers. They're going to take it, make the house look brand new. So what we're going to use is the 70-30 rule like we talked about already. So for this house, we use $80,000 as our comp, uh, right between these two numbers here. So we take the $80,000. We'll put that on the screen and start a running total here. You're going to multiply that by 0.7, also known as 70%, right? That's going to give you 56000 now, let's say that we've looked at the repair costs, you know, needs a new roof, needs some floors. We've gone through it. We've got pictures. That's the first thing you want to get once you contact the owners and they contact you. Say, yes, I'm interested. Get pictures as fast as you can. Um, there's no reason to drive out to every property um, that's just a warm or hot lead. You really want to get those pictures first, kind of get an idea of the estimated repair costs. So we're going to say it's $30,000. So in a running total, we're going to subtract $30,000. That gives us the all-in investor price of $26,000. But then again, we need to make money as wholesalers, right? So we're going to shoot for 
um, a $5,000 wholesale fee. But again, this being kind of the lower side of the budget in Indianapolis, um, there's times we've only made $1,000 or $2,000 um, down here. So just use the, don't get stuck on the 5,000. That's just kind of a reference and for our example. Sometimes you may make more. So minus the 30,000 gives us the 26,000 all in investor price. That's what we're gonna market it to our buyers list. We're gonna minus the $5,000 um, wholesale fee. And that's gonna give us a max cash offer to the owner of $21,000. Now, if we get it for less, let's say they say, oh, well, we only want 15,000. Then you can say, okay, great. And that just boosts your wholesale fee, right? Um, but maybe they come and say, hey, we want, we really want 22,000 and we're not budging. Well, then you can flex on the $5,000 wholesale fee and make $4,000. Still a good deal, especially for a property at this price point. So as you can see, coming up with a good comp is super important um, and under working with the 70-30 rule is very important in uh, not just selling it to the right investor later and giving them a good deal, but also getting a fair price uh, for the owner and helping them out of their situation, giving them a fair cash price offer. So this is how I comp and analyze all our properties right here. Like I said, stick around. The next important piece is to get a good repair cost because the flipper is really going to want to know that. And that's really going to affect your numbers and some kind of times can fluctuate thousands of dollars, tens of thousands of dollars. So you really need to educate yourself on that. We'll do another video on that. Uh, but hope this video helped, uh, in analyzing your current deals that you're working on now, uh, please give it a like and subscribe. If you know anybody that would benefit from this, please share the video with them. Uh, once again, I'm Scott Perry with Indie Solution, and we appreciate you watching. Have a great week.